For more on that, I'm now joined by Matthew Lee, UN Bureau Chief of the Inner City Press in New York. Uh, Matthew Lee, welcome to the program. Poland sure, thanks a lot. and the United States have apparently not been able to reach a deal on deployment of the missile shield. Will the Americans start looking elsewhere or perhaps we could still expect some sort of a deal to be struck between the two? Sure. It's, well, it's like, a, you know, it's a poker game. Uh, many people say it really does come down to money, sadly. I mean, not sadly, but the, 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 the difference appears to be between the U.S. is offering about $20 million a year additional on top of $27 million a year they give for Poland's air defenses, and Poland is throwing around a billion-dollar figure. What Poland says is that, is that if it allows the U.S. to place these missile interceptors uh, it'll make itself more of a target, presumably from Russia. And so they, they, they want to make sure, Poland says, that, that, that the deal on balance would make them more secure and not less secure. So I, don't, I think that the, the, the negotiation is ongoing. It's, it's too early to say whether, whether these missiles will go in Poland or maybe Lithuania. That's the other option. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Russia has been opposed to the missile shield plan from the very start, but the United States seems to be pressing ahead with its plan apparently without uh, any forceful reactions from the Russians. Do you presume the Was that Washington and Moscow may have struck some kind of a deal that uh, we may not be aware of? That's, that's very interesting. I mean, I, I think, I mean, obviously on Russia's point of view, what they've said is they're not going to start, uh, start bombing anyone until the missile shields go in. But they're still on record as saying, and I, and I think that Poland has cited to their threat to, to at least point missiles at wherever these things go. But the, the, it is, I mean, so it's hard to say sort of where, you know, Russia, you're absolutely right. There, some of its diplomatic moves have, have not had the same vigor they once had. Uh, but, but it's unclear what the, you know, what the deal would be. R Russia had, had offered to sort of do a joint, a kind of, they'd said to the U.S., if you're, if you're serious about this, why don't we put something in Azerbaijan? I don't know if you remember that. And the U.S. turned it down. So it's a, it's a, I think you know we're still at a stage where 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 each side is uh, is uh, you know moving its chess pieces. Uh, I, I don't think Russia stopped making a threat. Let's put it now, that way. if and when the missile shield is deployed, could that be perceived as the start of a new Cold War? No, that's well, that's what people have said. Is what is is particularly although you know the the the, the Bush administration has said that it's not. This is not uh, because they perceive any threat from Russia. So that's what would distinguish it from a Cold War. They're, they're saying, you know, they've definitely mentioned Iran. They mentioned North Korea, but it's interesting. I mean, one thing that's changed since this whole thing began is that the U.S. has taken North Korea off its state sponsors of terrorism list. North Korea has, you know, started demolishing at least the water tower of what it was supposed to be its nuclear facility. So it's, it's interesting that, that, that there's been no change in the, in the U.S.'s desire to put up the shield, even though one of the two countries it named as a possible threat, it now says is no longer a threat. Um, it's, it's related to a Cold War just because you have, uh, you know, Russia saying don't do it and the U.S. saying, you know, we're going to do it anyway. And so. finally, uh, Mr. Lee, let's take a quick yep. look uh, at the apparent uh, escalation of the situation between Georgia and South Ossetia. How serious do you think uh, is the situation and is the worst still to come? It's actually, yeah, it's gotten there. I mean, they're, they're, Georgia has two, two breakaway republics, uh, uh, South Ossetia and Abkhazia. And this, uh, there's mo most, mostly in the news in the last few months has been Abkhazia because there was a shooting down of a drone. There were a lot of words back and forth. What's happened in South Ossetia is more serious because you actually now have shelling. Uh, most people would say it's coming from Georgia, although Georgia said it was responding to some fire from its breakaway republic, South Ossetia. Pretty much the shelling seems to be, Georgia definitely fired some shells into, into South Ossetia. Two, at least two people are, kill, are, are dead. And Russia has been asking for, for you know, the international community to condemn Georgia and for Georgia to sign that sign a sort of a, an agreement not to, not to commit aggression. I think this is more serious than, what, than, than the previous threats in, in Abkhazia. And I, I expect you know, early next week to see both at the Security Council in, the, in, in New York and elsewhere Russia seeking some action. Again, you can never tell. It's still, you know, too dead. I don't, I don't want to be dismissive of it, but it's not. Things could certainly get worse, and it looks like they will at least get somewhat worse. Whether it will go all the way to outright conflict is not unclear. Matthew Lee, the U.N. Bureau Chief of the Inner City Press in New York, thank you for joining us.